Almost exactly a month ago, well on vacation actually, I leaked first details of Zen 7 that included a 2027 or 2028 launch time frame, the use of bleeding edge TSMC 1.4 nanometer nodes for incredible clock speeds and a large IPC increase, restructuring of the cache system from Zen 6 for more L2 cache per core and 33 core epic chiclets that go up to 264 cores and by the way 264 3D cores, 3D being a new variant that moves all of the L3 cache off of the core chiplets onto not a V cache layer, but a proper L3 cache chiplet layer. But on those last two points, the 3D variant and the core counts, technically I did not confirm in that video what was likely to come to consumer desktop Ryzen. I was just mostly focused on the per core performance increase of the architecture and the fact that 264 3D cores existed at all because that was just incredible. And actually, while well, on vacation again, that's right, you are watching this while well, I am visiting my family up in Minnesota. Before I left, I decided to leak New details I've heard over the past couple of weeks regarding consumer Zen 7 because, well, it's not quite as crazy in some ways as the Epic variants sound. It's certainly not a stagnation of performance either, and I thought you all deserve to know about this, again, so that you can properly discuss what the consumer versions will look like versus the Epic ones, so you're not guessing about what socket they will use, what core counts they will have, and I don't know, just seems like an interesting coincidence. Maybe every time I go on vacation now, I will have a Zen 7 leak. We'll have to see. But anyways, I want to talk about what you can expect out of desktop Ryzen Zen 7, but first an ad from a sponsor. Are you too depressed to go outside because of how expensive Microsoft software is? Well, there's absolutely no need for that. Just go to cdkeyoffer.com. That's right, this piece of content is once again sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com. And I say once again because they've been a fantastic sponsor of Moore's Law's Dead and its community for many years. And that's because they always deliver the best pricing reliably for Microsoft products like Windows operating systems, office software, and they also sell games and other things as well. So make sure you check them out, especially during their Easter sale going on right now. And if you do, use offer code BROKENSILICON to save 25% on all Microsoft software and then die shrink to save 3% off on everything else on the website. The community uses them. I use them for my new Zen 4 X3D desktop. And Jesse here needs to stop moping around, and I think use them as well. So that's once again, support Moore's Law is Dead by going to cdkeyoffer.com through the links below today. It's okay, Jesse. It's okay. All right. So as always, with leaks that are for products that are this far away, like two to three years or more away... Remember that it's early, and I cannot promise you that AMD won't change their plans. In fact, I want to give you an example of something that did change. I don't know if I've said this publicly before, but I was recently told over the past few months that from the same sources that got me all that incredible Zen 6 info that is now partially verified publicly by AMD, I say that so that you know you can take this to the bank, I was told that the initial design for the desktop Ryzen chiplets was for 16 cores, being 8 Zen 6 cores in 8 Zen 6C cores. That's right, a combination, a hybrid design, and they were going to consider actually giving you 32 cores total on desktop and, of course, then with Medusa Halo. But, of course, that would have been 32 cores where half of them are lower clocking cores, and they changed their mind. Eventually, AMD decided that consumers would probably rather have 24 cores that are all classic cores clocking as fast as possible over 32 cores where half of them are clocked slower because that will probably get the higher scores and be the most noticeable performance increase for consumers in 2026. And so that is a thing that did change. And I cannot promise you that what I'm about to tell you about Zen 7 will not change as well. But anyways, with all those caveats in mind, let me put this quote on screen here from one of my best AMD sources that was willing to be quoted on something that they told me about after I put out that other Zen 7 video. See, they saw my Zen 7 video, and then they reached out to me saying, 
After seeing your Zen 7 leak, I thought I should also let you know that there will likely be a standard version of Zen 7 for consumers, well, and Epic, I assume, by the way, that still has L3 cache on the core chiplets. Uh, the 3D variant does have no L3 on the core chiplets themselves. So the current plan for Zen 7 is dual 16 core chiplets that will still utilize vCache to increase the total L3. Don't worry though, the IPC of the classic variant and 3D variant is supposed to be comparable, and the classic variant will likely have higher voltages and clock speeds than the 3D core variant, so I'm not sure you'll get those fancy 3D chiplets on desktop with Zen 7, but I do think it's likely Zen 7 will go up to 32 cores on AM6, with tons of vCache included. And so there you go. AMD is not resting on their laurels after Zen 6. They're going to 24 cores next year, and then it seems a couple years after that, they are likely going to 32 cores, and 32 cores once again on a bleeding edge node. And yeah, well, because of this massive core count increase, it's probably going to require a new socket that will probably be called AM6. None of that really surprises me. And it doesn't really surprise me that it, it seems, although I'm not technically confirming this, but it seems like it's unlikely desktop Zen 7 will get this elaborate 3D core layout. I mean, when I first saw this 33 core Epic chiplet with a separate L3 chiplet below it, I thought, wow, that's crazy. That looks expensive. Are they really bringing that to consumers? And the answer is probably not, at least not to most consumer segments or at least most tiers of consumer segments. I guess I don't know if there might be some 3D Halo product, but that doesn't seem to be the main focus of uh, desktop Ryzen. And that doesn't really concern me though, because what I'm seeing here is another large IPC increase, a large core count increase over Zen 6 that already has a core count increase over Zen 5. And this is going to probably come with, I mean, I'm not kidding here. I'm I know that they're going at least above 6 gigahertz with Zen 6. It's conceivable Zen 7 hits 6.2, 6.5, or even just shy of like 7 gigahertz. So per core performance increases, 3D core or not, yeah, like, you know, up to like around a 20% IPC increase or something. Or, well, probably a little less than that, but I, well, I said up to, along with ridiculous clock speeds, I think we're going to have plenty of performance per core. And then when it comes to multi-threading performance, yeah, I think we'll be fine without them being 3D cores as well. Wow, AMD took our complaints of 16 core stagnation to heart, haven't they? Uh, although, I must ask, well, this is something I kind of want to close on. And let me know what you think in the comments, too. Please respond to what I'm about to ask you in the comments, because I want to know what you all think. Do we need 32 cores on desktop? Even in three years from now. I mean, I know it can feel crummy that AMD didn't increase core counts ever since Zen 2. But I mean, so I have a 16 core CPU right now. And I had a 16 core Zen 2 back in 2019. And I can honestly say that if Zen 7 came out tomorrow... I might stick with whatever the 16 core SKU is yet again. Don't get me wrong. I will want at least 16 cores for the workloads I do making videos and podcasts for you all. But I can't say that I need more than that six years after Zen 2 was out. I don't really think I need more. And remember, actually, I am the exception, the person that says they need 16 cores. And even though I'm not even sure if I need it, I just want 16 cores. Like if I go to the Amazon best CPU sellers page, nine out of the top 10 as of recording this video are not above eight cores. And in fact, five out of five of the top CPUs are eight cores or less. In fact, in fact, there are more six core SKUs in the top 10 list on Amazon than there are 16 or 12 cores. And there aren't even any 12 cores there. So look, this might change with time. Who knows? Maybe some new game comes out that requires more cores or whatever. But from what I am seeing here, I am the exception for wanting even 16 cores. The overwhelming majority of you are speaking loud and clear to AMD that you don't really want more than eight cores right now. And again, that could change as core counts go up, price per core goes down. Maybe everyone starts seeing 20 cores is the sweet spot with Zen 7. I just find that hard to believe. And because of that, I also find it hard to believe that AMD is going to go past 32 cores for a long time. Like I kind of see them making up for lost time by going to 24 and then 32 cores, gen over gen twice in a row here because they were on 16 for what was that two, three, four, five, four generations in a row. They were on 16 cores. Uh, but after that, 
if they go any higher than 32 cores, and I don't think they will, I think they will stick with 32 cores on AM6, maybe till the last generation on that socket. It will be just to beat Intel at absolutely everything. I mean, maybe Intel is going to go to one of those 40 or 48 core designs that I've been leaking for years now. Actually, check out that Griffin Cove leak I put out a while ago if you want to see what Intel's working on to compete with Zen 7. But what I'm getting to here is, if AMD goes above 32 cores, I think it's just to have better specs than Intel. And in fact, if I was working at AMD, I would say, I'm not sure we need any more money poured into this once we get past 32 cores. I think people can just buy Threadripper. But again, maybe I'll get yelled at in the comments for saying that. I just feel like per core performance is all we're going to really care about after we get to 32 cores. But who knows? Maybe Fallout 5 will launch in a few years, and then I'll be saying, ah, we need 32 cores. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's no way that's going to happen. There's no way Fallout 5 will be out that soon. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please remember to like it, to share it, and to make sure you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring that bell button. About half of you aren't subscribed. That really does actually help the algorithm a lot. Helps us reach more viewers if you are subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Additionally, please make sure that you subscribe to Broken Silk on a podcast app of choice. Give us a review there. It helps us reach those viewers. And then also make sure that if you have the extra just even a few dollars or less than a few dollars a month, consider joining Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. That's how you get access to asking guest questions. Die Shrink episodes, there's hundreds of them. A new one comes out uh, like a day or two after this. And you'll also get the ability to ask guest questions and submit voicemails. They're ad-free versions of Broken Silicon, free questions on live streams. There's, there's, there's tons of stuff that you get by joining the Moore's Laws at Patreon, no matter what tier that you join. And, well, as I always say, no matter what, if you made it this far towards the end of the video, at a minimum, thank you for watching. <laughs>